okay, I heard a no, but I also impl- it was also implied that you don't respect me, you don't value me. And for that reason, I will never bring up another suggestion to you ever again. Hello, fellow administrators, it's time to get connected to Administrator Nation podcast. I am your host, Josh Madera, and today we're going to talk about how to level up your communication skills for administrators and office managers. To do so, like always, we brought an expert. He's a business coach, university lecturer, and former CEO from Winnipeg, Canada. You can check him out on his YouTube channel, The Company's Expert, where he talks about business, HR, and obviously including professional communication skills. Welcome to the show, Bill Todd, also known as The Company's Expert. Thank you, Joshua. It's great to be here. Thank you. Likewise, Bill. I'm excited. Um, so all the way from Canada, how, how are things over there in Canada right now? Oh, great. It's, uh, we're heading into the Canadian winter. So everyone is, uh, everyone's loving it up here. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Over here, uh, the weather in California is kind of crazy. One day's hot, one day's cold. Like, you need to have a jacket, and then you need to have a, a hat for the. It's just crazy weather all the time. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I can I'm, imagine. <laughs> I'm really happy to have you here, Bill. Uh, can you mm-hmm. share a little bit about you know what you do and 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 uh, all that experience that you have with with our listeners? Uh, well, uh, like you said, um, I teach at a university, uh, University of Manitoba, here in. Uh, Winnipeg, Canada, and um, for the last nine years or something, I've been a management consultant helping uh, SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprise. Uh, So small business, medium-sized business um, with various things, including some issues with communication and culture and stuff like that. Um, And I have a YouTube channel uh, that I think you mentioned, the the company's expert. So uh, that's also taking up some of my time now that we're uh, now that we're mostly indoors uh, because of recent events. So, yep. I, uh, you, you know what, Bill? And I love that title, The Company Sex Word. You need to help me come up with a title for me. I don't have one. We need to figure something out in the future, okay? Help me out sure, with that. Sure, I can help you with that. Just think grandiose, <laughs> right? That's, that's yes. the first step. I love it. Hey, Bill, so why don't we start by this? Why is communication so important for an administrator, for an, for an office manager? Oh, it's incredibly important. Um, it's something that ironically, everybody is talking about today. Like if you go on LinkedIn or other social media platforms, it's, uh, it's, it's always sort of at the forefront of everybody's mind in a business context. But ironically, in my experience, having worked across several industries, when it comes down to the day to day uh, business that most people face in their jobs and their careers, it's something that people don't really focus on. And uh, a lot of people really uh, have a lot of room for improvement when it comes to their communications. And in the end, this can be absolutely critical. Um, For example, when you look at why people quit their jobs, what is it that makes somebody want to quit their job and go and look for another job or move on in their career? Uh, Most people, you know, you would think intuitively it would be things like money and the compensation uh, or the nature of the work you do. But a lot of times we don't see that. What we see instead is that people have a problem with their boss or they have a problem with their coworkers. And that's the thing that leads them to leave that situation. And if you go more, if you drill down deeper into what exactly they have a problem with when it comes to their boss or their coworkers, it's usually the communication. You know, they're not, they don't feel respected. They're not, um, they're not sort of uh, spoken to in a respectful way. Uh, They don't feel valued. They don't feel um, that they contribute. Yeah. And it stems down to communication. So when, at the end of the day, it's one of the most important factors and the most important skills the, that people can have. Definitely agree. That's a, that's a, that's a great uh, answer, Bill. And so you mentioned a couple there. You mentioned one of the effects of, of having bad communication as an administrator, as a manager. Mm-hmm. And, and, the, and the challenge there that I see is 
you're on one side you're losing employees you might be losing good quality people for the wrong reasons um there there might be good solutions for that but it, it, then on the other hand the communication with with the owner with the ceo you know and being able to go back and forth and have that effective communication where you need to get something for the team you need to get something for 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 your group for the people sometimes you got to go up and and you know make sure you get those things that people need and then it's just so so important so what are yeah. some of the um effects that you see happening in companies bill by that that have bad communication um well uh for a start productivity takes a major hit if uh if we look at the context of say um an administrator or an office manager and i mean that can be pretty broad but um you know number one if 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 you're an office manager you're probably communicating with a group of employees on a regular basis constantly you're probably communicating with customers or potential customers on the phone maybe answering like inquiries things like this uh, you may be communicating with vendors or suppliers um you may be communicating with the government or regulators they might be calling to check to see if you know that you've received a you know a, a, a letter or something like that i mean you're communicating with several parties and if the community if your communication skills are bad okay and what i mean by that is is multiple things number one you know you're not the communication is not very cordial personable um and the effect is that when people get off the phone they really don't want to talk to that person again you know um if so so already you're you're damaging you're damaging sort of goodwill and if you're if you're doing this with potential customers or potential partners or suppliers or anything like that i mean there's a direct loss of revenue that you can measure in dollars because people just decided not to do business with you based on the fact that they did not have a good experience dealing with you if you're talking about employees you know you're communicating with uh, the employees in your group or your department um you know you can you can have the sort of problem i already mentioned where you have people leaving the company because they just don't find it a very friendly place they don't feel valued they don't feel respected they don't feel they contribute um you know that's the sort of harm you can do there and conversely if you have amazing communication skills uh what i've seen uh in several situations is that not only does productivity go up people are much more enthusiastic to work they can work more efficiently because they have full and complete information when they need it but also employee retention goes up you retain the best employees what i've seen is that because of office managers that do a very good job at communicating with the employees in their little work group that uh you can retain not just like all employees but you can retain the best employees usually the best employees they uh uh you could equate best with more experienced sometimes not always but sometimes yes and more experienced means older not always but a lot of times yes and older employees generally they don't quit a job to go to another job just to make a little bit more money Correct. they tend to be able to pick and choose and so they tend to stay in places that they enjoy they enjoy the work they do they enjoy working there and so that ability to be able to uh, have very good communication skills it can result in the retention of your best employees so they don't want to leave they feel like they found a home they like where they are and i've seen smaller businesses where they use this kind of positive communication to be their competitive edge they end up with all the best employees in a region where there are larger more enterprise competitors that do pay more yes but the most talented employees don't go there they stay with the smaller company because they're treated like a human being and they enjoy where they work and that's where they want to stay and it's all thanks to how they're treated and and the the bulk of that is communication skills i love it i love it you know it it comes down to relationships and relationship yeah. building and when you were talking about the reasons that employees leave i couldn't stop thinking about divorce 
I couldn't stop thinking about, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the, the, the husband and the wife. And mm -hmm. normally you will ask, what was the reason? And a lot of the times, the biggest, biggest problem mm -hmm. that comes up is bad communication. I wasn't understood. They yeah. like he didn't get me. She didn't get me. And that caused, uh, you know, the, the relationship to go bad and ended up in a divorce. And and it's it's human behavior. It's uh, it's relationships. So so definitely we see that in the in the workspace. Um, Bill. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's the same. It is, you're absolutely right. It's the same principle. Um, you know, if someone says something and the other person gets offended. Right. That that's bad. That, you know, tensions escalate. Conflict escalates. Um, you know, if somebody, if, if, if one person has to disagree with the other person, but the way it's done yeah. is that the other person, you know, takes offense and they misinterpret it as, oh, you have a problem with me. You don't like me. You know, yes. um, if you have to say no, um, and, and as we all know, like if you're working in an organization, you have to disagree and you have to say no a lot. Right. Yes. Uh, You know, now the ability to be able to say no and to disagree without the other person getting offended and then ended, ending up hating you, not wanting to work with you ever again, avoiding interacting with you because of it. Like if that's the way you interact with everybody, things are not going to go well. On the other hand, if you can, if you can say no, if somebody suggests something and you can say no, uh, sorry, you know, we can't do that um, in such a way that the other person still uh wants to deal with you still feels respected still believes that you know you value them as a person and all that yes. kind of stuff that's tremendously powerful you know and people hey Bill, and, want and to also work with still, people like that still bring you ideas still mm -hmm. bring you things that are happening because sometimes that that no when you don't know how to handle it just closes down other people of not wanting to to open up to you again you know, bring things to your attention because they just feel you don't listen, you, you don't care, you don't put attention. So that's a great point that you just made, Bill, right there. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a conflict these days with um, ideas of being assertive or empowerment, being able to express yourself. And um, maybe in the past, uh, some, in, some, some people working in organizations felt a lot of pressure to, um, you know, tow the party line, to not rock the boat, you know, uh, I'd encourage group think and things like this. And so the sort of pushback from that is for people to feel assertive and empowered and they can say no, and they don't really uh, feel ashamed about it. They don't feel awkward about it. And that's great. That's a great thing. If the answer is no, you, ha you should be able to say no. However, um, there, are, there are issues with that where, you know, being assertive can come across as being too direct or insensitive or communicating all kinds of other things like, okay, I heard a no, but I also it was also implied that you don't respect me. You don't value me. Yes. And for that reason, I will never bring up another suggestion to you ever again, even right. if I right. have something that could be of <laughs> tremendous value. Right. Um, so th these are the kinds of challenges um, that can be overcome with having great communication. Yes, I definitely agree. And I've seen that happen so many times. Hey, it's happened to me. You know, there's mm -hmm. where points where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to keep my mouth shut next time. Or, um, <laughs> But with time you learn, with time you also learn to work. When, when, when you improve on your communication skills, mm -hmm. you also learn how to work with people who don't have good communication skills. Yes. Um, a lot of times the CEO, the director, the president, the owner of the company not might not have good communication skills and the success of the growth of the company for you as an administrator, a vice president, a manager is how well you can handle that, that communication that you have going up where you don't get, you know, uh, dismotivated and, and you let your, your, your um, emotions uh, get involved and you know, it, it, it goes beyond, but, uh, but it's, it is really important bill. So we already talked mm -hmm. about, why communication is important. We have a little bit more clarity on that. And mm -hmm. what are the effects that bad communication can cause? Now, what mm -hmm. kind of things, Bill, can we do to improve our communications as an administrator, as an office manager? That's, that's, that's a great question. Um, there's obviously 
a lot that can be done. Um, there are things that you can do at a sort of high level, you know, the way you approach, how you communicate with people and how you, and your attitude towards it. And then obviously there's low level stuff. There's specific technical things that you can do, um, say when you're writing emails or when you're talking to somebody on the phone. Um, so for, for the low level stuff might be good, good to start there. It's pretty simple stuff. I mean, just things like don't be crude. You know, um, some people take offense at different things. So, you know, you don't really know what people think. So just play it safe and, you know, don't make any off color jokes and stuff like that. Yes. Um, you know, especially when you're dealing with somebody new, um, you know, that's something like that. Um, another thing of mine is to not be overly formal. Um, different industries have their own uh, culture when it comes to how they do communication. And uh, for example, I've had a sort of foot in the world of education and uh, very, very formal communications, a lot of times unnecessarily formal. You know, people don't need to talk to their coworkers like everybody's a lawyer, you know. Um, it, can, it, it can sometimes send the wrong message. Also, um, there are different types of people, different personalities. Uh, the world is a rich tapestry of different types of people. But uh, I always err on the side of being very specific in, you know, if I'm, if I'm setting up an event or something like that, or I'm arranging a, a, a meeting or a deal or anything like that, I tend to be very, very specific. And I appreciate people who are very, very specific. They spell out all the technical details um, rather than assuming people know what you're talking about. You know, it's good to be intuitive, but yes. in case the other person isn't, it's good to have that stuff explicitly stated as much as possible to avoid confusion. Um, generally just being personable and warm. A lot of people don't do that. I mean, we talk about this stuff and if, if I imagine if you sat down most office managers and said, is it better to be personable and warm or to not be personable and warm? They would all say, yes, of course, it's better to be personable and warm. But then you observe a lot of people in their day-to-day -day jobs and they're not personable and warm. You know, they're very direct, gruff. And when the pressure's on, which, you know, it is, things can get very stressful. Even if you know this, you know, you know you should be very friendly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, most it goes people, out the window. Yeah, exactly. It goes <laughs> out the window as soon as the pressure is on. That stuff just goes all, and, and that's when the mistakes are made and the damage is done, right? So it's, yes. so it's uh, it, it sounds very simple, but it's actually quite a challenge to do this. Um, you know, people love to be complimented. You know, how often do we in our, in our sort of day-to-day -day life send a compliment to a coworker? You know, yes. not like your boss or somebody, but, you know, to a coworker and say, you know what? I really like the way you do this. You know, a lot of people don't do this, but you take the time to do this. I just want you to know, I really appreciate that. Please keep that up because I always, it's, it always helps me when you do that, you know, or something that, like this. That's a great point. That's a great point that yeah, we forget. You, and the thing is that a, a lot of people probably are like, and it happens to all of us. We, we know things, but then we forget. Then we, we don't apply. Uh, yeah, we, just, yeah. we just get in this, you know, groove of just the day by day by day. And we forget about the importance of those small little details. And that small little thing, what a big impact it can create on one of your um, team members. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so people, I mean, people like to be complimented. People like to be asked for their input, you know, um, and an office manager, I mean, if you're running the office, you know, you are making decisions, you are a decision maker and you're in charge of not only coordinating things a lot of times, but you're in charge of running things, right? So, yes. um, people are other employees, other people are involved in the decisions you make and how you do things. And, you know, we all, this is another thing that we know intuitively, oh, everybody likes to be asked for their opinion. It's flattering, right? If someone says, you know, I was thinking of doing this, but what do you think? You know, is this something that you could get on board with? You know, would you do it another way? Be, a lot of people appreciate that, at least being given the option yes. to, to contribute. Um, but once again, that's something that once the 
pressure is on, once the stress kind of comes in, it's like people stop doing things like that. Um, you know, people like being given explanations for decisions that come down, right? So if the office manager decides, okay, we're having this meeting here and I need you and you and you and you to attend, right? Now, maybe if that's a change, maybe if that m might be inconvenient for some people, people enjoy being at least given an explanation, you know? And once again, that's something that, you know, you have to take time out to do. And it seems like it decreases your efficiency because you got 50 things to do. And, you know, I got to get this meeting scheduled and I got to move on to the next thing. And uh, if you take the time to just, you know, take another minute to add a bit of an explanation or to do it over the phone so you can explain what's going on, that helps to salvage relationships and keep them very strong. You know, and finally, pe people like being listened to. There we go. You, know, uh, you, you, yeah. you just hit the diamond. Yeah. I mean, if, if someone has, um, if someone sends you notes on something, they say like, look, you know, I, I'd like to talk to you about this. I, I have some suggestions. I've, I'm a bit confused about this, or I don't like the way this is going. Maybe I don't understand it. You know, when the pressure's on, the instinct is just to say, okay, well, I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe later we'll, we'll catch up on this. You know, and that signals, okay, I'm not important enough for you to talk to me and, you know, you don't value my opinion, my input. So in recognizing the importance of that moment, like you, you know, you have a decision to make here between what would be locally optimal for you to get on with your work or to invest just a little bit of time in a positive relationship with that person. You know, make it so that they feel that they're listened to, you know, no work at this moment is more important than listening to them. You never know. This could be very important. A lot of people do that kind of thing before they seriously think about leaving a job or, yes. or doing anything else, right? Or just yeah, they'll come to you. They'll come yeah. to you and they'll tell you what's happened. They might tell you what's happening and you kind of have to read between the lines. Definitely. And, yeah. Right. They, they won't <laughs> straight out tell you if you're not a good listener, they'll, they'll tell you, uh, I don't know. I just haven't been feeling myself like they won't go directly to, you know what? I've been talking with this other company. I'm trying mm. to decide if I stay or if I go like that communication normally is not going to happen. It's going to yeah, be really exactly. politically correct. And you have to be a great listener. When we talked about communication, we think about, oh, this person being a great communicator. But. For me, and I think that's why you left the best for last, <laughs> it's definitely about being a great listener. Um, what I've come to learn that there's five levels of listening. And mm -hmm. the top one, the top one is listening with empathy. So yes. you're, you're listening so high that <laughs> you're even putting yourself in that person's shoes. You know, you're understanding the pressure they have in their house the rent, the kids, the whole situation. You're able to understand everything that's surrounding them when they're talking and communicating and trying to get something across. When you're Definitely. able to, to do that with the people you work with, all of a sudden, when you talk, when you come up with an idea, when you express, when you come up with mm -hmm. a solution, it's just connect. it just connects. It connects. It makes an incredible difference. And... Um, one of the things that, that helped me develop that a lot, so the way that I moved up to management, mm -hmm. um, manager, district manager, regional manager, and all that, my background was sales. I'm a professional. I love sales. I'm a professional salesperson. So in sales, one of the keys is, you know, you got to break the ice. You got to be nice. Uh, ask questions. Qualify. Understand. Once you get all that, then present you, you do your presentation and you got to get them excited. And then when you get a no, oh, how do you handle a no? How do you do this? How do you close a deal? So having all that experience on my background, mm -hmm. I think that really helped me go to the next level when I was managing because I, always, I was always asking questions, understanding their needs. You know, where are they coming from and trying to find the solution for that. And, and, and my communication was based on that. So I, I think that was a really big advantage 
that I had when I was uh, managing uh, people or in my career as a, as a, as a director and all this. So, yep. so definitely listening key, key element. Definitely. Yes. That's, I mean, to that point, if you are uh, a manager in any context, you know, there are different styles of management, right? People manage different ways and sometimes yes. different situations call for different styles. But I mean, imagine if you're, you're a manager, you're an office manager or anything else. And, you know, it's not that you do a lot yourself, but if you can inspire all the people around you, all the people in, on your team, in your group, all the people that deal with you on a regular basis to do a great job for you, you know, I mean, that's a reflection on you. And the end result is that the entire team succeeds, right? You know um, what, Bill? You know, I love, before, before we move to another subject, I, like, I love the word you, you use for that. Mm -hmm. which was inspired. And, yeah. and what that brought to my head is, as a leader, what kind of things you communicate without talking, which are your actions, right? Yeah. The results, your effort, you being on time, you being responsible, you know, you giving going that extra mile on things. You know, what kind of things that you are doing that you're not even talking But you are communicating and you are expressing and you are saying something by those things that you do, either good or bad things. Yeah, because, exactly. Because sometimes in communication, that's something that I say a lot. Like, I'll listen to what you say, but I will actually obey or, or follow what you do. So yes. that's a, a, an important piece that maybe we're leaving out <laughs> a little bit on communication is what are your actions communicating to your team? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's where we get into like leadership and stuff like that, where you're, um, you're essentially setting an example, right? People observe not just what you're saying, but, you know, through your actions, what are you communicating? Right. And the example I always use for that is, you know, if you're, if, if you're a manager and you're telling employees to come in, and, you know, be at your desk at eight o'clock in the morning or something, but you yourself kind of wander in around 10, you know, I mean, what, what is that communicating? Right. So, so exactly. definitely, I mean, coming back to more, um, uh, I guess we're still sort of maybe in a way talking about the low level communication, the specifics, mm, okay. you know, um, you know, like there's, there's all kinds of basic techniques that people can use. Uh, one of them, is to get people to repeat, right? So if you are saying something verbally, yes. and I mean, how often does this happen? You know, you got a busy office, you got people all coming and going, you know, you got a phone message to give to one person, you got to remind this other person about something before they head out the door, you know? And so just so you say something verbally to somebody and you want to make sure that they have it. So you just get them to repeat it, right? Um, that works a bit easier if you're, if you're the boss, but you know, in any situation that usually is a good thing, getting someone to repeat it after you. So they repeat back to you what they heard. And then you have the opportunity to correct it if they misunderstood anything. Uh, I mean, a lot of things get verbally, a lot of things get garbled far more often than people realize. So that's, that's something very important. Um, something else that uh, uh, is part of this also is conflict resolution. Like we didn't really talk too much about that, but that's a whole area where on a routine basis, you're going to have conflicts and, Oh my God, you know, yes. conflicts. I mean, conflict being defined as a difference of opinion. It, it might not be an argument. It might not be even mentioned, but you'll have a difference of opinion between people. Somebody says something and another person thinks, Oh, that's a terrible idea, but right. they don't say anything. Right. So you have that conflict. And being able to resolve that, that comes down to communication skills. Very important. Yes. You know, um, I mean, Bill, and, and, and on that point, you know what, mm -hmm. um, for some reason today on my, on my, around here in my area, I have something mm -hmm. when you say conf I'll, everything that we're talking about, just, mm -hmm. I say, you know what, I'm going to pull it out. Um, this is something that I bought many years ago, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Oh and, yeah. Awesome book. Know, Isn't it a classic? Like I it think is, a lot of yeah. books, like yeah. this is this is like one of the fundamentals. I, I, a lot of books have, have have and speakers have come out of this 
information. And I think that definitely this is something that any administrator or manager out there should spend some time listening and learning from this. this oh, is definitely. This is going to help them improve that communication and how to influence, how to win friends and influence people. I thought, oh, influence people? And and it sounded like like a little shady, but once you go in and listen to it, it's it's everything is gold. It, it makes a big difference, right? So I just wanted to, you know, plug this in because I think it's kind of related to everything that you're talking about today, Bill. Oh, definitely. I mean that that came out in like the 30s or something. I mean that that that's been very old. And if you could summarize it in two words, I would say you could summarize that whole book by saying, "Be nice." Yes. You know, like that's the, yes. the the message. And if you're nice to people and people, you know, you're, you're respectful and all the stuff that being nice entails. Yes. Good things happen. People want to work with you. People end up liking you, all, all that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. You got you to gotta care about others, right? Exactly. And, you know, and, 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 and show it and express it. And, and that's why communication is so important, Bill. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you think of how many how many bad bosses there are in the world, <laughs> how many managers. You know, we're talking about about office managers and administrators. I mean, just within that, how many people uh, there are that are just not as good as they could be. And, yeah, and a lot of times, you can fix, you can sort of paint over all those imperfections with the material that we're talking about, with the material that is contained in that book. Yes. Um, yeah, it's like the it's it's the the solutions lie within. Yes. Within and that, like, right? like he says, like we, we got to help break that paradigm from people. And a lot of times the, the, the manager administrators who are not doing good is because they simply were taught. Sometimes, you know, they have bad habits from other jobs or, or they were really, really good at what they do, but they, they have not really learned the managing administrator leadership which which is a different thing you know not not just because you were really really good at at being an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer all of a sudden you're going to be really really good managing people and leading uh, a company so yeah definitely and i want to take the opportunity to say to anybody watching this podcast that on you know to ride the thing that you just started is I would openly recommend that if you want to improve your communication skills, reading that book is probably a great first step. So <laughs> how, yeah, so how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie uh, is a great read. There's a reason why that thing hasn't been out of print for incredible it, like 70, 80 years, something like that. Yeah, hey, it's go it's yeah. going it's going for a hundred years almost. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. That's so, I mean, you know, uh, good things stand the test of time, right? So, yes. and, and there's a reason why that's still around. Um, now the other thing that we haven't really touched on yet is, you know, why communication skills are so great is that this can directly lead to you improving your career, career advancement. Yes. You know, that's something we haven't talked about, um, to get a promotion, to be trusted with more authority, uh, to be high, highly regarded by people in higher positions and to look like your management material or, you know, climbing, climbing the ladder kind of thing. That's the number one thing. It has the highest impact on wow. your ability to be promoted is having great communication skills. You know, if people, if you walk into a room and people meet you for the first time and after five minutes of having a conversation with them, they like you, they want to work with you. They feel good working with you. It makes them feel good about themselves. You know, uh, that's the that's the value this has. And um, who do you promote? You promote the people that you want to work with, right? Yes. The yes. people who are in a position to promote somebody will promote the people that they themselves want to work with. You know, definitely, hundred um, percent. Yeah, they they don't want to promote people that feel that oh, if I bring a complaint to them, they'll take it really badly. They'll uh, they'll overreact. They'll, uh, you know, spread the negativity around and it'll be a huge ordeal. They don't want to work with people like that. They want to work with people that, uh, you know, if you bring up something negative, there's a problem or I'm not really on board with what you're doing or whatever it is, you know, it'll still be a pleasant conversation and your relationship will still be very strong at the end of it. 
and it will and it won't be awkward dealing with that person after the fact and that's all communication skills wow yeah. bill i think this mm-hmm. has been a great episode i am really grateful for you know finding you i was able to find you on a linkedin group and i mm-hmm. saw one of your videos and i said you know what i gotta find bill i gotta reach out to him uh, i want to have him as a guest on the show i'm really excited that and happy and grateful that you said yes and oh, i think we can still do many other things um here on the episode i would love to have you back on the show with a different subject where can people find you bill um well, first of all, I want to say I'm glad you did reach out to me. Thank you for having me. This is a, it's a pleasure to do. Um, for people who want to reach me, probably the easiest thing to do is simply just to uh, check me out on YouTube under The Company's Expert. So if you type that in, that's the name of my channel. And through that, you can get a link to my website if you want to go that far, thecompaniesexpert.com. And uh, from there, you can, you know, get my email address and stuff like that. So that's probably the easiest thing to do. Great. Bill, once again, thank you. And to our listeners, I want to say as well, thank you for listening. Make sure if you're still not following uh, on YouTube, on social media, make sure to click a like, make sure to follow us, share this if you like it. Be part of our community. We We have a special community. You can go to administratornation.com and be part of this group it's completely free and make sure you tune in for our next episode which we know you're gonna enjoy thank you and keep listening